uh, but we're going to start with Sonoma. Uh, they've had 34 races at Sonoma, and as you would as you would imagine, track position uh, it means an awful lot on uh, road courses, including Sonoma. Uh, the f matter of fact, the farthest back uh, winners have uh, won actually happened in consecutive seasons, in 2007 and 2008, when Montoya and Kyle Busch started 30th and 32nd. So that's kind of weird that it happened in back-to-back -back years. But those are the only two that have ever won outside the top seven rows at Sonoma. So if you are not in the top seven rows, likely you're in big trouble. Also, if you take a look at the pole sitter, strangely enough, has only won once since 2005. That's really weird. That was Larson a couple of years ago. Um, and yet the average starting position over the last 12 races is 7.9. And three of the last four winners started eighth. So you have some interesting numbers. You say, well, I don't really have to get too over crazy with the pole sitter. If whoever starts eighth this week is probably somebody you want to keep an eye on. Uh, and don't be outside the top 14. Um, as far as manufacturer, you definitely don't want to be driving a Ford. Uh, now, if you want to take a look at, if, you know, if you want to throw a couple of bucks because Logano is a big number and so forth, I have no problem with that. But uh, it's interesting. Ford has only had a win in one of the last eight at Sonoma, but that was Kevin Harvick. He's retired. So if you look at it, no current driver right now with Ford. Okay, has ever won this race while driving a Ford. So that would be a new, which means, yes, if you're going to take Ford this week, and I'm not sure I haven't double-checked to find out who is the, 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 the Ford driver with the best odds. Um, can't imagine the odds of Ford drivers are very good. But if you're getting, you know, over 20 to 1 or 30 or 40 to 1, you want to play around with a couple of bucks, that's okay. Uh, but I can't imagine in any way that there are, are, are many Ford drivers that are considered like top contenders this week. No, yeah, very much. And I, I mean, just look at the title sponsor of this race. It's the Toyota <laughs> Safe 350. So, oh, it's uh, not the Ford? Like, no. okay. <laughs> exactly right. You always want to win the sponsor's race, and Toyota's going to be given everything that they can to not be embarrassed in their, their title race, right? Um, yeah, Martin Truex Jr. has certainly helped them. Toyota's been fantastic at this track, Chevrolet as well. Uh, Fords have not had it. Um, kind of feel sorry for that one Australian supercar guy that's coming over and they, doing his first start in the series and a Ford on, at this track as a result of that, though. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, just taking a look at uh, right now the two, uh, a couple of uh, drivers that I would have considered uh, just. Uh, and again, I'm not talking about, say, like, uh, let's see, Blaney is 28 to 1, and Logano is 45 to 1. And if you want to throw Cindric in there, of course, he's 22 to 1, but he's not winning back to back. So uh, there were McDowell and Busher. And so and now I have to think twice because the odds are okay, but they're also, well, they've never won. So I have to think twice, but still, McDowell and Busher. You've got, they're both 14 to one, and McDowell does have a, a road course win, and he has been seventh and third the last two years here, and Busher has been fourth and second the last two years here. So those those are clearly the best Fords, uh, and that's why they should be uh, where they are with the odds. But again, you just have to just keep that in mind that, um, you prob and again, again, with most of these drivers, you do have to take a chance with some of them before qualifying because um, qualifying is going to be so important, as we talked about. Uh, even though I can't imagine Busher McDowell's odds will drop too much if they qualify well, but you never know. Maybe McDowell or Busher, if they hit the pole, uh, maybe their odds cut in half. Um, but then again, if they hit the pole, uh, I'd feel a lot better about Ford. So I, I think it's still one of those situations, if you like him, you take him now. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting because when, you know, specifically you, you named the two best Ford drivers on road courses right there in, in Mike McDowell and Chris Buescher. Um, Austin Sindrick, also fantastic. Um, he's got to do that in the Cup Series, though. He has a tendency to get out there and lead laps, and he can be very competitive and always was uh, a great road course driver in the Xfinity Series. He is here, too. He's just got to do it in, yeah. in Series next. Yeah. But looking specifically at Michael McDowell, 
his two best finishes. He had he was nowhere to be found at Sonoma up until 2022 when he qualified fourth the first time he qualified inside the top 10 there and then he finished third. And then last year he qualified third again and finished seventh. Those are his only two starts inside of the top 10 and those are only his his only two top 10 finishes uh, in his 11 start career here at this track. So uh, qualifying definitely is important here. I think that proves it. We know that Michael McDowell is a great road course racer, but I think if he does not qualify inside the top 10, like you said, I'm not sure his odds are gonna change dramatically. It's probably worth waiting to see if he is able to get that top 10 starting spot again. And another thing that might be a, a knock against Ford is just taking a look at the only road course race we've, we've seen so far this year that is uh, Coda, and at Coda, no Fords in the top seven. The top Ford was Busher when he finished eighth. So uh, McDowell, he actually had problems with the car and, and mm -hmm. finished all the way at the bottom. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. With that in mind, I might, if, if I'm choosing, I might just go, if I, and, and I'm going to take up both of them, then maybe that that's a, an extra... Uh, an extra reason that I would want to say, all right, I'll take Busher. Uh, maybe a 14 to one, I'll just go for it. But uh, yeah, as far as, uh, by the way, at this uh, Coda race, it was Byron getting the win. So Chevy won and it was really dominated by both Chevy and Toyota, of course, without Ford even being in the way. So Chevy had the win at the race and Bowman also finished fourth. Uh, AJ uh, was sixth and Chastain was seventh. Toyota had Bell and Gibbs second and third and Reddick fifth. So Chevy and Toyota, again, even just at Coda, uh, looking like the manufacturers you want to keep an eye on. Starting with uh, Martin Shrex Jr., who you referenced, he's got the four wins at Sonoma. He's got three wins in the last five, and he has no wins this year, as we know. So uh, what I'm looking at is I'm actually, look, if that's Kyle Larson, or let's say Chase Elliott from two years ago, his odds are between two and three to one. So I think you're actually getting a good number with Martin Shrugs Jr. at five to one. And if you're going to take Martin Shrugs Jr. at any racetrack at this time in his career, uh, you know, based on uh, the odds, and you're going to put him at five to one, this is it. This is the best one. So you might as well just say, okay, if I have to suck it up, I'm going to do it because I think five, like I said, I think five to one is manageable. I don't, we talked about three to one as like a no, no four to one. I'll think harder five to one. I'm okay with, especially everything else aligned right now with Martin Shrooks Jr. Uh, it seems like a pretty good, um, a pretty good wager. And I definitely would want to take it now in case he qualifies, say, uh, up front or, or on the pole because then it'll really go down. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Truex is a great um, pick at this at this level. I think if he qualifies on the front row, which he very well could do, it'll probably go down quite a bit. And, and remember, it was only four or five seasons ago where it felt like Martin Truex couldn't lose on a road course. He was by far the best road course driver that was out there. Uh, kind of took the back seat once Elliott figured out what to do with the old car and got eclipsed there and so spent a couple of seasons maybe in the woods but came back and, and won and, and got back here at Sonoma last year. He's led an incredible, incredible 264 laps at this track. That is huge for a road course, um, especially considering these races only have like 100 laps. They've got significantly less laps than all of the other oval races. So to have 264 laps led throughout his career, 17 total starts, four wins, uh, he's been dominant at this at this track more so recently than than in the early part of his career. But yeah, five to one, I think he's a really great bargain, and I would go ahead and take him today. Yeah, he, he's uh, going through a little bit of a, a slow part of at least result wise uh, mm -hmm. this season. But it is a road course, completely different. So maybe that's part of the reason why he's five to one. So take advantage of it. Okay, now the I will say this: the other drivers that will come up next. You've got Byron, Larson, Bell, and Gibbs. Um, matter of fact, I, I'll post it up here. The, these are the guys that are 7-1. to one. And I'm telling you right now, I'm willing to pass them all. Uh, I think there's excuses for, the, for me to pass on all of them and look for a little bit better odds. I say that because, yes, Byron's coming off the win at Coda, but he hasn't done anything really here. 
Um, Larson, I think, is the most interesting of the lot because you are getting seven to one, which is okay for Larson. And but here's the thing: he's had five poles in his last six races here, and it really hasn't done much except yeah, well, one win. And when he won here, matter of fact, in 21, I don't believe I remember it was like some dominating performance. So, um, so he's got the win, uh, which is nice. But again, that's just once out of five poles. Uh, eighth last year, I think he started 16th, and 17th at Coda. So even that's nothing that you get too excited about. Bell, meanwhile, second at Coda, uh, just has one road course win, but he hasn't done anything here. And Gibbs, third at Coda, 18th last year in his only cup race here. But in road course races, he's only led one lap over his career. So I just, again, we're talking about 7-1 to one drivers. We're not talking about 10 or 12 or 14. So at 7-1, to one, I think Larson is the only one that I would consider. I might be a little bit different than you. So Larson, I think, is pretty impressive from the fact that he can qualify extremely well here. Uh, eight of his nine starts have been starts inside the top five. And like you said, the five consecutive poles in a row. Um, really impressive. But yeah, like you said, he's really only been able to to compare his laps led. 200 and some for Truex, yep. 94 here for, for Larson. And he won one. So, I mean, that kind of goes to, to show Larson's got the one lap speed. He can get around the course, but for whatever reason, has a little bit harder time getting it across the entire um, entire race. So I'd be more open to Larson if he qualifies, you know, lower, uh, quite frankly, outside of the top 10 and shows some pace in, in practice, perhaps. So maybe uh, he has yeah, a problem point. qualifying, yeah. uh, but then has shows some good practice times. That's maybe when I'd be a little bit more interested in him. The one I am interested in, though, and the reason why is just because he's largely still an unknown is Ty Gibbs. Um, he this this track compared to other road courses, like when back when we only had Watkins Glen in this track as two road courses, it seemed like you know Daytona and Talladega. We talk about that all the time. You get you get one and you get success on one. There aren't that many people that have a ton of success on both. Um, this is one of those tracks where either you get it or you don't. Gibbs, last year, first time out in the Cup Series, qualified sixth. That's pretty impressive for a rookie. He won his very first race in the Xfinity Series on a road course uh, event. And he ended up finishing 18th last year. So that's, you know, nothing really to, to speak of there. Um, but Gibbs, yeah, I agree. Seven to one's a little bit rich for me, considering he's only got one race. And yeah, he's been pretty good on road courses. But look at Cindric, and as we talked about in the Xfinity series as well, it, you got to prove it in the Cup series, and he hasn't done that yet. Um, so it'll be interesting. He, like Larson, I guess he's probably another one where I'd want to see where he qualifies. Uh, if he goes qualifies inside the top ten again, those odds are probably going to go down, and it's not going to be worth chain worth chasing. Uh, but maybe if you're able to look at the practice times and he's up there and you think that he's going to have a good qualifying, maybe it's time to grab him then. Um, just because we know he's good on road courses, uh, it looks like he understands, early indications look like he understands and, and gets this track, and that could translate to some, some success for him on Sunday. He has, uh, I believe, two career wins in the Xfinity series yep, on a road course. That's correct. I want to say it was Indianapolis and Charlotte, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, it was Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen, okay. Yeah. So uh, so that definitely is important to note. Okay. Um, now, uh, we move down to, let's see, the, the next three. You got Bell, Reddick, and Elliott. So you got seven and a couple of eight to one. Not, not Bell. We already talked about Bell. It's just Reddick and Elliott at eight to one. And uh, Reddick has really been good on road courses, really good, except here. Yeah. For whatever reason, he's done nothing exactly here. Like I said, yeah. <laughs> you either get this track or you don't. <laughs> and he hasn't gotten it. And you're gambling that he will. So maybe what you want to do is see. Now, I'd have to double check and see how he's done in practice and qualifying here recently, or especially qualifying. But. All of his starts have been in the top 10, 10th, 5th, and 2nd in his three starts, but not a single finish inside the top 15. So yeah. uh, similar to, to Larson, you can get the one lap maybe out of this. Maybe you can squeeze that out, but to do it over 110 laps like this race is, is meant for, this is really a rhythm track or a lot of blind off-camera corners. To do that lap in and lap out for an entire afternoon is just really hard. 
Uh, and then you've got Elliot, who he would be the other one that I would pay attention to. Why not? I mean, he's now, you know, still not where he was before, but he's still better. He's on track uh, being better. Um, he's got five top tens, three top fives, and a runner-up in seven races here. So that's solid, even though he's never won. And we know how good he is on the road courses. But the thing that was disappointing was the 16th at Coda, even though earlier in the year he wasn't as good as he is now. So the, and he's eight to one. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still interested in Chase Elliott at eight to one. Yeah, I I think Elliott's a a, a pretty good pick here at eight to one. To be honest with you, I would like a little bit better, but. Um, yeah, like you said earlier this year on the last road course, he he didn't have things together. He hadn't he hadn't gotten to the point where he is now. He's racing significantly better. This has traditionally been a good course for him. Remarkable that given all of his road course dominance, this is a place he still hasn't won at. But he's consistently started inside the top ten. He only had one start outside of the top ten, and only two finishes outside of the top ten. So remarkably consistent throughout his career, seven starts. Uh, and he's led laps in each of the last four times that he's been here, whether he's finished well or not. So uh, I think Elliot is another good choice that I would pair up with Truex uh, pretty early if I could. And, and not to get lower, put it that way, or, or you know, more, more, more rich for you. <laughs> well, uh, here's another guy that if he goes out there and qualifies well, his name recognition, it mm -hmm. might be cutting the odds in half. So yep. you might want to take a look at it now. And uh, by the way, Chase Elliott is third in points. So it's Quiet. yeah, yep. quietly uh, his game is back. Okay, now you've got those next uh, few, a couple we've already talked about, uh, McDowell and Busher. AJ is the other one, but AJ is interesting only because of the fact that if you look at his general experience here, not good. Uh, no top fives, average 22nd. But his best finish was last year when he finished sixth. So that he was also sixth at Coda this year. We know how strong he is on the road courses. Getting 13 to 1 is not bad for AJ Allmendinger. But again, he's never had a top five here. So you are risking that. And the thing with AJ is, is you know, if you put him like, you know, in a, um, if, if you put him with in a Penske or uh, Hendrick. Putting him like with those teams, and he comes to a road course. I mean, he's probably six to one because he's not gonna have to worry about other stuff. Uh, but he doesn't have that kind of team, and we've seen that be an issue for him over the years. Is that sometimes his team is and his equipment kind of let him down. Um, but you're getting thirteen to one, so there's a reason for it. And I'm okay if you want to take him this week. I got no problem with that. Yeah, I. I He's another one that just hasn't shown on this track his success. We all know how great he is on road courses, but he hasn't shown it at Sonoma. Yeah, he's been able to ring out that, that one lap again, but to put it together lap after lap for a hundred and some laps is really, really hard. And, and his problem and, and several of the other ones that we've talked about that just haven't shown anything at this track, other road courses, this, this is a very narrow track. So if you lose track position, it is exceptionally difficult to work your way back through the field. If you compare that with Coda, Coda might be four or five times as wide at any given point in terms of asphalt to race on, to make passes on. That just doesn't exist at Sonoma. They repaved it this year so the pavement will be new, but it doesn't widen it to the extent that, you know, somebody like Almendinger or some of the other really top road course guys can just, you know, seg segregate themselves out to the left or to the right, going into a braking zone and now break people. It's just much more difficult to do. You've got to really get there and get your elbows out. And a lot of times these, these road course guys like AJ Almendinger end up coming off worse on that and dropping through the field. And then after that, they don't have the chance to be able to catch up. So Almendinger, yeah, probably going to qualify pretty decently. But again, he's not one that I would put past, you know, a top 10. Could he come out and win? And would I be surprised? Absolutely and absolutely not. Um, but he's not one at, you know, at that point where I, for that price point where I think he's going to be a great value. There are others that I would choose instead. Well, let's talk about uh, one of the best values. And that's this man right here that we're talking about next. And that's Denny Hamlin, the absolutely. points leader. So the points leader is getting 20 to one. And yes, we know he's not this like awesome road course driver, but 
he's okay. He's not bad. And he has 11 top fives over his career, which is okay. Because he has 47 races. But let's also keep in mind that it, you know, it took Denny a while. Early on in his career, he didn't do anything. And uh, he's become, now, especially with a lot of those ringers, the years when he was getting started. I mean, you know, they, they, it took him a while, like a lot of these drivers, to figure the things out on the road courses. So Denny, has got the win. He won at Watkins Glen. Um, 14th at Coda, nothing to speak of this year. But he has four top fives here out of the 11. And he was on the pole last year. And he led 33 laps. So, matter of fact, he's got five top tens in his last seven at Sonoma with three top fives and a runner-up. And I'm getting 20 to 1. Yeah, okay, I'll take that. Quietly good, your points leader. Consistently in the top ten. Consistently qualifying up front recently. Consistently leading laps at this track. I don't know why you wouldn't choose Denny Hamlin right now at, at 20 to 1. I, I think this is, he's almost a must play for me at, at this point. Um, came out, like you said, won the pole, led 33 laps. Uh, he's led 33 laps two other times at Sonoma throughout his career as well. So this is nothing new for him. I don't know why he's mispriced like this. I would absolutely grab him now before people come to their senses. All right. And now we've got the other long shots uh, in this area. You've got Chastain, Suarez, uh, Sindrick, Will Brown. Okay. So out of, out of this uh, Chastain, Suarez, we, we talked a, a little bit about Sindrick. Um, Suarez did win here a couple years ago. Uh, he's already got to win this year. He's done for the year. Uh, Chastain, uh, he has uh, three top tens out of four, which is nice. He won Coda, seventh at Coda this year, twenty-two to one. So even Chastain is is all is is not that bad. The only thing that I think works against him in my mind is 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 he's kind of I'm like looking at him right after I just looked at Denny Hamlin. Other than that, if I looked at him first, before I looked at Hamlin, I go, hey, this isn't bad. <laughs> this is a pretty good long shot. So I think he's good, but he's just not as good as Hamlin. But, hey, you're looking for additional long shots, and I got no problem if you want to take a stab at him. Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't split Chastain and, and Hamlin, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Suarez, I think you're right. Um, I think he's probably maybe i don't know he, he's been quiet since his win so i don't expect him to be able to to repeat the victory uh Sindrick, like you said great road course driver it'll be great and interesting to see what he does extremely difficult to win back-to-back -back races uh, especially considering the way that he kind of wasn't expected to win last week um will brown coming over one of the two guys coming over from the supercars like shane van gisbergen it's going to be really really hard for them to emulate what shane did last year at chicago especially at a track like this though of the two uh cam it cam uh what's what's his last name cam Smith? cam waters is the other one. Oh, um, oh cameron waters okay cameron waters yep so he would be the other one of these two so cam waters is in a ford which would make, oh. if you're going to choose one of these two guys, Will the one to go for. Uh, and just so you know, Shane is actually one of Will's spotters. Uh, Will is actually driving a Richard Childress car, Chevrolet, whereas uh, Cam will be driving a Ford from RFK Racing. Um, but out of this bunch that we've got on the screen now, why wouldn't you not take Kyle Busch? Uh, and uh, Kyle has been fantastic oh at this yeah track, regardless of where he started he finished second last year led 17 laps and he started 12th uh, he had a 30th and 22nd and 22 but prior to that he had a string of six straight finishes of seventh or better including a win at sonoma so why would you not take kyle bush at that price right now um i will so yes <laughs> 28 to 1 yeah it is kind of strange uh i mean look it's almost like well, that's what his number is every week now because things aren't going well. But this is a road course. This mm -hmm. is different. And I think you have to look at it that way. He did have a top 10 at Coda. So I think that should mean something. Yeah. Absolutely. 28 to 1. Absolutely. I think he's also a no-brainer. Uh, Blaney just has no luck right now. So I think the first step is, is just to get a top 10, which I think he could do. Uh, mm -hmm. He was 12th at Coda. And he has four top 10s out of seven here. So I, I think he could get a top 10, but the Ford is what's really hurting him. Logano, though, you're getting 45 to 1, even though he's with a Ford. So, again, like we said, um, I know he only has one career win out of 41 in road courses, 
but he does have four top fives at Sonoma, and two of them have come in the last three years. So at 45 to one, sure, why not just throw a buck or two at Joey Logano? Yeah, I agree. I mean, you get almost getting what twice of what you get for Kyle Busch. Um, Bush, obviously, the better choice of the two in terms of potential to win. Um, Logano, um, 14 starts here. He did finish third last year, but didn't lead any laps. Uh, like Blaney, I would expect him to be a top 10 kind of car. And, and just like last week, that's where you've got to be. And you never know what can happen at the finish. And you could end up uh, finding your way in victory lane. All right. And, by, and with the way Kyle Busch is going, uh, you, you know that he's going to get uh he's going to get into some traffic this week cuz you can't <laughs> avoid it on a road course. So, I wonder how he's going to handle that. Um uh he hasn't been handling it well lately, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Uh Bowman, you know, Bowman is also another one that might not be a bad hey, like like Logano, why not just throw a buck or two on him because Bowman is is okay as a road course driver. Again, he's not bad. He's okay. He's got six top fives, a couple of runner ups. Um, he's the type of driver in road courses, though, that always just like when he does well, he sneaks up. Like at most of his tracks, he sneaks up at the last minute in the last uh, you know cycle, and he's there. And sometimes uh, he's lucky enough to get a win. He was fourth at Coda this year. Um, the only thing is, this has not been a good track for him. None of those top fives have come here. Uh, but he's having a good season, and he's forty-five to one. So, yeah, um, not overly impressed with with any of them uh, on the screen, to be honest with you. Even Chase Briscoe, like I talked about before, yeah. this is a ch- this is a track where either you get it or you don't. And this is one, unfortunately, that doesn't appear that Briscoe does. Same thing for Bowman. So I would tend to avoid them. Uh, maybe at another road course, uh, we've seen Briscoe be very good. Same thing with Bowman. I just don't think Sonoma is doing it for them. Yeah, and of course you can uh, forget about all these guys down here. I mean, look, Kozlowski's even 100 to 1. Wallace, 200 to 1. Uh, I, Austin Dillon is just, uh, I think he's ending his his career. Uh, I, I don't know. He can't be on the team next year, can he? Top 10 last week. It's a family owned business. I would expect him oh, back. <laughs> there you go. The next hour, Almarola. Yeah, uh, perhaps. Nine lives and all that stuff. Just really rough year for him. You know, you can usually count on him. He comes through with a win almost every season, and yep. it kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, so it's not over yet for him. But, man, this year has just been a, a probably the biggest struggle that I've seen him have since he's been in this series. It's been a real challenge, and it's really head-scratching because – Kyle Busch hasn't seen the same types of trouble, or at least Busch has overcome it and has been better more recently. Dylan just hasn't been able to find the edge. Maybe last week would be the start of that turnaround for him, uh, but we kind of expected him to be a little bit better than expected uh, last week at that track. Yeah, he only has, uh, he's got two, the top tens at Texas and mm-hmm. this Illinois track. So, yep. uh, whatever that means. And then every other race. Except one, he's been in the 20s and 30s. That's just bad. Okay. Not even top 20s. Exactly right. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, a few top 20s, but they were 20th. They, were, <laughs> they weren't 19th or 18th or anything like that. Not good. Uh, that's uh, all I can say. It's uh, and, and just even just too many 30s, too, and most of those 20s are highs. So, all right. Uh, let's go with uh, our picks. So, I mean, the, the two that stand out. Truex being the, 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 the top driver out of the favorites. Um, and then Hamlin being the long shot that really sticks out. So what I'm probably going to do is say, because I'm going to go with Truex and I've got a, and, and I've got a low number there, um, I, I've got other long shots, obviously, besides Denny Hamlin, that I'll just throw money on. And that includes uh, Kyle Busch, uh, maybe Chastain, Logano, uh, those uh, th- those few. Other than that, if I was going to take one more top contender out of the lot, uh, it's probably going to be Chase Elliott. What about you? I don't disagree with you on any of those choices, but I don't throw Ty Gibbs in there as far as one of the top ones just to kind of spread it out. Uh, I-, I think the the odds, just the way that they fall out and the way that this these driver's statistics are at this track. You, you can't pass up Truex Hamlin and Kyle Busch this week. 